So you're new to rowing and undoubtedly the question has crossed your mind, is it safe for my back? Cause it looks like a lot of back when you see the rowing movement. And frankly, there is a lot of trunk involved and that's your spine. That's the question we're gonna answer today. And we need to look at all of the factors involved, what you can do to keep yourself safe and whether or not it's something you need to be concerned about going forward. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Shane Farmer and this is Dark Horse Rowing where you build the life that you wanna live and we just happen to use rowing to help you get there. Our spine is really like the core that keeps our entire body together. And if you have ever been in back pain before, and brew, I know how that feels, it feels like you cannot operate your day-to-day -day life without it. So it's important that you discuss or consider this factor of if you're gonna be putting your back at risk with rowing. Let's take a look and address at the way that we actually load the spine as you move through the stroke. While it may look as if the spine is taking the majority of the load as we drive or push through the stroke where you can of get a lot of the strength from, there's actually quite a bit of distribution that happens into the arms, the shoulders, and that whole junction there. And the reason being that it's a horizontal force that we are pushing against. So what happens as you go to push into the machine? You reach a point of tension on the handle. Now that is the moment at which your body actually begins to do work. So if you ever have moved and you don't feel any tension, then out of nowhere you feel that kind of that pop of tension on the handle, that's when your body really starts to interact with the machine. Now to do that, the shoulders have to load. If the shoulders don't load, you would ultimately end up in this place where you don't really feel like you can put much power into the machine. I've addressed this in a whole lot of other videos. So if you feel that, uh, go explore other videos of finding power. But back to the original point, that arm needs to engage. And typically we do that through the lat. And so as soon as the lat gets involved, now this shoulder girdle is what starts to take a lot of the brunt of the force of the stroke. Now, does that mean that the midline isn't doing any work? Absolutely not. That trunk and that hip junction are actually having to do quite a bit of activation because they relay what happens down at the legs. So the legs are where the force production begins. It has to travel up the legs into the hips, the back, the spine, the shoulders, down the arm and to the handle. So it's almost a box, a three-sided box, which is not a box at all. So the point is that you've got these three lines. The load begins in the legs as you begin to push and almost in an instant, all three of those lines begin to engage and work together. So what it may look Look as if there is a lot of spinal load. Well, that back or the trunk or the spine is ultimately, the, it's like the transmission of the entire equation. It has to brace in order for the power driven in the legs to make it up to the shoulders, down the arms and to the handle. So work that happens down at the feet gets translated to the hands. The trunk is what acts as that translation unit. So it's not just this uniform load placed onto the spine. And with that being said, if we are able to maintain a relatively neutral position of the spine or the trunk, then that means we're going to ultimately be able to maintain safety because what we're doing is avoiding a downward load that inherently places a lot more stress onto our discs. And Typically, if we're talking about back issues, so much of it happens when we're in this vertical position or I guess a standing position and gravity is weighing heavily on us and we do some kind of movement where we have to bend over or pick something up or we twist or we, we put ourselves into this disadvantaged position that our body might not be used to, perhaps the bottom of a squat, whatever it may be. Well, in this instance, some of your weight is taken off by being put onto the seat. So you're not in this totally vertical position, meaning we've been able to take some of the stress out of the discs and out of the spine by placing it into the seat and therefore you don't have to worry so much about that vertical force and having to work against gravity. Instead, you're almost working horizontally to gravity. The ultimate answer is that you actually get to deload quite a bit of the stress that when you view the stroke may look like a lot of load onto the spine, but in reality is actually a little bit more gentle than we may assume. Now, can I absolutely say that you are at no risk with your spine on the machine? No, I absolutely can't. I am in no way qualified to assess whether you specifically are able to row. But generally, what we found is that people that have had previous existing back issues can row fairly comfortably as long as you make sure that you put technique first, not putting your body at risk just for the sake of working out. Let's get into the fun stuff. How do we actually keep our bodies safe? And what are the tips that we can use to make sure that our spines are are healthy and safe for our forward trajectory to the moon. 
The first thing that you can do to make sure that you are not overwhelming your system and protecting your spine is to make sure to decrease the resistance of the flywheel on your machine. A lot of people end up taking their damper settings and throwing them up to a 10 because, I don't know, George Trainer at their gym said that makes you strong. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. Take the damper down, let's dial it down a little bit. We don't need to always put it at 11. And you can actually get a lot of work done even at lower damper settings and copious amounts of videos that I've put out to help you address and find the right damper setting for you. Quick answer, there's no uniform damper setting for everybody. It is simply where you work best, but one of the first ways that you can make sure you are not overwhelming your system, AKA your spine, and making sure that you stay healthy is use a reasonable damper setting. Think about using somewhere from like a three to a five. That's a great place to start. You can get great work done at a two. It doesn't dictate the amount of work you do. That's how much effort you put into each stroke. Don't think about damper being important as far as height goes. That doesn't make you stronger. And just because you're strong doesn't mean you should be up at a 10 either. That's tip number one. Don't use a 10. Work on the lower ranges. Number two on this list is making sure that you are practicing good postural endurance. What is postural endurance, Shane? It's the ability for all of the muscles that run up your spine, as well as in your trunk and your lumbar, all of the muscles that support the part where you don't have ribs or hips, all the in-between stuff. It's the ability for them to maintain good, that same position over time. Think of it in weeks. In week one, expect that about 20% of the time, your postural endurance will be able to sustain. What that means is for 20% of your strokes, you might be able to maintain good posture. And the rest of the time, Time, your brain is gonna forget what it's doing, your muscles are gonna physically get tired and so they'll just start to slump and they won't be able to maintain it. And that's normal and you should not get down on yourself for that. Week two, you can pick that up to about 40%, provided that you row at least you know two or three times in each week. So then it comes up to 40% of the time, you're getting you know better at this, your muscles are starting to go, oh, okay, we got it, We're figuring it out. Week three, about 60%. By your fourth week, you're into the 80% range. And then the rest of your life is that final 20%. The point is that you teach Teach your body over time how to maintain good position. If you aren't prioritizing good spinal position in the stroke, it's not rounded. Don't let that spine round, but it's also not breaking open like the exorcist on the bed. So you need to make sure that you just have this good neutral spinal posture. And the easiest way to do that is just think about drawing your shoulders back from a standing position. Just lightly squeeze your belly, lightly squeeze your butt cheeks, and that should help you establish about a normal curve of your spine, making sure that you can maintain that postural endurance is going to ensure over time that you are able to sustain and keep your back safe. Early on, focus on your posture. Next up is practicing pause drills, arms and body over. Now, let me show you exactly how this drill works and why it's going to be important for you. Pretty simple, actually. You are literally pausing the stroke at a particular point. And the reason that we want to be doing this is because what it does is it allows us to stop, take a moment, do a check of our body and go, am I in good position? The arms and body over position is here. This is where it begins to break down for most people. As they start to close, the back usually rounds and maybe that looks familiar to you. And so what this drill helps you do is you can do this for 10 minutes. You stop, pause at least four seconds, try to hold yourself there long enough that you actually do a body scan and go, okay, I let my back round. Let me straighten that up. Okay, now I'll take the next stroke. Arms away, body closed, and your body should be getting to that one o'clock position. And so then you sit there and you go, all right, okay, that felt good. I got my posture. Let's take the next stroke. Bend the knees, push. Check, got it, push. Oh, my back rounded, okay, straighten it up. Good, all right, let's go on. And you can continue that drill on and on and on. It allows you the time to slow down, stop, and focus. And honestly, that's the biggest killer of good technique is trying to rush through things. And so by doing this, it allows you to slow down, focus on it, and get it right, and keep your back healthy. Fourth on this list is making sure you actually build strength of that upright position. And one of the best ways to do this is to carry heavy loads in a standing position, but putting that load into your front rack, meaning holding something from the front. You know that I'm a huge advocate for sandbag. By using this sandbag, you put it into the front rack or you hold it like you're doing a bear hug. Now all of the muscles on your back have to basically work to counter that weight because the weight's wanting to pull you forward. You need to resist against it in order for that weight to stay up. So anything that you can 
pickup that is slightly heavy is gonna start to strengthen your back. And over time, you start to do add in more and more things that have to do with the strength, and that's gonna get you strong, and your body's going to start to learn how to support itself in that position. Once those muscles start to get strong and turn on, your spine gets safer because your body's supporting itself. And finally, get really good at using your arms. What? Yes, get good at using your arms. And that's because this ability, let me take off, get rid of this. Need a demo. So with the arm straight, we're so used to hanging off of the arm that often we don't get good at using the lat. This guy, right, this big meaty guy right here. If you can take your hand and do this with me, grab that reach your arm forward, reach the shoulder, but then drop the shoulder down without pulling it back. Roll it down. You can almost think like you're twisting your fist as you drop the shoulder, that'll help as well. That lat is what is going to help your arms engage with your trunk to make sure that the arms are doing their fair share to support load and distribute load instead of if the shoulder is just forward and internally rotated, this is internal rotation, that's external rotation. If it's internally rotated, that means that this is not really doing much support Instead, it's just kind of hanging off of the socket. None of the tissues are actually working to help. And that means the spine is gonna have to do more work. So get really good at dropping the shoulder down, engaging the lat. And when you go to drive, make sure that these are tight. And when you've done that, well, now that means that you are going to have good, strong shoulders. It's gonna take stress off of the spine. You're gonna stay healthy. And you're also gonna be able to drive more power from the legs. So I'm curious at the end of this, if you've been successful in the past coming from back injury as I have and being able to row comfortably what has been a tool that you have used successfully to make sure that you feel and stay safe? Have you had adverse reactions? Are you somebody who has struggled with that in the past and maybe you haven't had the same success on the rowing machine you've had to avoid it? I wanna know, I wanna hear about it. Let's hear your stories down in the comments below. And as always, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the bell next to it, because we got everything that you need to know about the rowing machine, whatever brand it is. And while you're at it, if you're looking for more about this getting started on the machine, make sure you check out our how-to videos, because they're gonna give you everything that you need to know, roll through them, we got you covered.